I just wanted to share the word that, uh, that I have for you as we, as we finish up and thank you all for joining here. You know, as I, as I look at scripture and my message is this, 2022 should feel new. For most of it just feels like more of the same old, same old stuff. And why is that? Well, we're just tired. We're tired of so many things. We're tired of coronavirus and COVID-19 infections. We're tired of vaccination news and, and tired of face masks and, I, and isolation and tired from working from home and tired of uh, Zoom meetings, in fact, like this, tired of uh, uh, coronavirus statistics and Delta variants and Omicron variants and contagiousness. We're tired of thinking of three quarter of a million people COVID-19 deaths in the United States and tired of thinking about the death of one or two or more of our friends or relatives that have died during this year and some from COVID-19 complications. We're tired about news about political unrest and distrust. We're tired of news of even more violent crime and murders. We're tired of not being able to visit friends or ones in the hospital. We're tired of delayed dates for funerals or memorials. We're tired of finding supply shortages for things we expect to always be on the shelves at the store. We're tired of hearing about unruly passengers on planes. We're tired of inflation because of so much <clears throat> pent up buying demand and slow supply chains. We're tired of worrying about vacation safety in motels or with friends or on cruises. We're tired of being tired and it's no wonder that 2022 doesn't feel new. Our bodies are broken, our hearts are broken, our lives are broken, our homes are broken, our jobs are broken, our politics are broken, <clears throat> our policing is broken, our relationships are broken, but I want you to know that the Bible still promises something new for us because the Bible and only the Bible can offer good news for the broken. The promise begins in the Old Testament book of Isaiah and the writings near the end that some, call it, uh, some scholars call third Isaiah where the vindication of Israel's promised in the person of the coming Messiah. One of the songs we sang echoed these words from Isaiah 60 verse one. Arise, shine, your light is, and uh, just, you know, the tiredness uh, that we face from so many things. It's no wonder that 2022 doesn't feel new when, <laughs> when uh, you know, everything is messed up and broken and yeah. over and over and over. But I, I do want you to know, according to scripture, that uh, um, in Isaiah uh, was arise, shine, for your light has come. And that's from Isaiah 60, verse 1. <laughs> And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. To the ancient Israelites, the light has come to us through Jesus Christ. And our light from God has come. And certainly a world in darkness needs the light of God. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. Light is power. Light is understanding. Light is revealing, light is peace, and when God's light illuminates this world, then all will want to know. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The light has come to the ancient, ancient Israelites as to promise the Messiah to us is through Jesus Christ. And because it's good news, all will want to know the light. Isaiah 60, verse 3, and the nation shall come to your light. And the kings for the brightness of your rising, even magi or wise men from far away who come to see the Savior from God, whom they knew as the new king of the Jews. Arise, shine, for your light has come into the darkness of our, and tiredness of our world. God loves us in our mess, even though he doesn't love the mess. God loves us enough to come to us through the Son, Jesus Christ, to whom we're introduced by his eternal name, the word. And in John 1, 1 to 3, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And we read this, in him was life, and this life was the light of men. 
the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and came to live with us. And this word is Jesus, who brings not just saving grace, but the power of creation, the knowledge of our situation and life itself, which is our light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. That light is ours in Jesus Christ. Isaiah the prophet goes on to tell us more about why our Messiah is given to our world. He comes with good news. Isaiah 61, 1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So he comes with the word of the Lord. And in Isaiah 61, 2, the Messiah comes in order to do those things. Uh, we just, in, in verse 1, that uh, bring good news to the poor, bind up the broken hearted, hearted, proclaim liberty to captives and opening the prison to those who are bound, bound by sin and bound by despair and bound by loss and bound by so many things. Isaiah 61, 2, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. So the Messiah comes with the word of the Lord, the word that is both favor and vengeance, but mostly it is comfort because he comes to us with life to replace our dying. Isaiah 61, three comes to grant those, to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Oh, he comes to replace our dying with his life. He comes to give us that garment of praise. He comes to give us that oil of gladness. He comes to give us beauty instead of ashes. And it's not just the Old Testament promise. It's the New Testament reality. As we have an invitation from Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30, where Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and are heaven, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. An invitation, such an invitation he gives. Come, all who labor, all who are burdened, all who are heavy laden, all who are broken down, all who are tired. And Jesus says, I will give you rest. Doesn't matter what you're tired of. Doesn't matter how you're challenged. It matters only that God is good and God is present. And he says, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I'm gentle, lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Such good news, such a wonderful invitation. Jesus, who could have come as that, as that uh, uh, bringer of vengeance, the day of the Lord will come when he returns again, uh, back from Isaiah 61, 2. He came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and to comfort all who mourn and leave the day of vengeance of our God to that time that the Father has decided. And since, since all of these prophecies point us to Jesus, it's incredible when we find out that Jesus himself announces himself as our promised Messiah. In Luke 4, verses 16 to 17, as Jesus begins his ministry. He comes to Nazareth, his hometown, where he'd been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, uh, and then begins to share the message. We find out it is the same message that Isaiah gave us. So as Jesus opens the scroll and reads, we find out that Isaiah's Messiah is with us. 
in Luke 4, 18 to 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. He sent me for recovering of sight to the blind. He sent me to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Those are the words of Isaiah 61, one to three. And that good news is what he gives in order to give us rest, in order to bind up our brokenness, in order to uh, restore our sight and our understanding, in order to help us to break out of this bond of sin and to proclaim that the Lord is good. Well, anticipation builds in Luke 420 as Jesus rolls up the scroll and gives it back to the attendant and sits down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fist fixed on him. So then he sat down, he read the scroll. He read that place from Isaiah that we began with. And when he sits down, that's because in, you'll find out in the scripture when Jesus sits down, that's when he teaches. And time for the lesson at this point, and all we have at this particular place in Luke chapter four is very simple. Luke 4, 21, and he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been, been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And it says he began to teach. He went on. I'm sure that he expanded all from Isaiah because Isaiah tended to be Jesus' favorite uh, books of prophecy in, in how he shared the word. And this turned out to be good news for the broken that is found in Jesus. When the light of the Lord comes, arise, shine, your light has come. And John says, in him was life and that life is the light of men. Jesus is that light that brings understanding, brings healing, brings power, brings, brings uh, redemption that binds up the brokenhearted and makes something new out of our old. Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing, but the question for the preacher is, is it fulfilled in your life? How is your peace? How is your grace? Where, what is happening in your life because of the goodness and the challenge and the grace of God? Your challenges are many. My challenges are many. The world we live in is, is confused and upset and turned on its ear. But Jesus came in order to bring peace. He came to bring us light. He came to bring us life. He came to grant to those who mourn beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that we might be oaks of righteousness. The Lord has anointed the Lord God, that Yahweh has anointed his son, Jesus, as the bringer of good news, as the one who binds up the brokenhearted, as the one who sets us free from the bondage of our sin, that we might know God more strongly, and that we might be made new in a year that barely seems new, because so much of the same old thing is here. Are you experiencing that newness? Are you experiencing that grace? God wants you to have it. God wants to give it to you. And God is good and he will. Heavenly Father, thank you that we had this chance finally to share the word. And uh, uh, although this day we didn't have the same combination of, of um, uh, smooth technology, uh, instead we had breakdowns and we had uh, running out of gas. We had uh, people protecting others by not joining in crowds, all of these things, Father. But you are still with us. You are still the God of grace. You are still the one who allows us to enter into your presence. You are the one who 
ministers your grace to us. You are the one who heals our hurts and holds us together and sets us free to your glory. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.